So we went ahead and glued uh, very carefully and um, stayed inside the lines so that we don't have any glue ooze. Uh, speaking of glue, I apply mine with these um, shop brushes. You can get these at uh, Harbor Freight. Fairly inexpensive. They are a little bit inexpensive and the hairs do sometimes come out. So I always pre-pull my hairs out <laughs> before um, then I use the glue. Top Fit is um, one of my favorites. I have Barge. I've used Masters, which is a great product. I've used uh, the stuff at uh, hardware stores. I can't remember the name of it. But uh, anyway, make sure it's all set to go. Let's go ahead and put this together. So I will put my fingers along here. I will take the ears and I will match up this side and that side there because it's clicked out. It's really nice and I keep my hands over here as well. And then I just, whoop, get out of there. You gotta really be careful with this stuff. And then just push it so it's flush. All the edges. And then we are good to go. All right. Make sure you wipe all the excess wax off of your um, uh, convex head hammer before you strike it onto the veg tan face because it'll stay there. Contact tap that all together. Okay, we are all set to all out our holes with a sewing awl, a Dremel drill press. And uh, again, this is geared for those that may not have a sewing machine in their shop, you can hand sew these. Um, make sure it's a good, tight, solid stitch. You are dealing with a holster, so it is very important for the final user to have a good, solid platform. All right, let's go ahead and let that just set up, and uh, we'll press on to the next step. Sort of lost track of uh, where I was, but I think I'm gonna give you an update. I remember gluing the two halves together and uh, then told you that I was going to either drill press or all stab, stab all the holes. And uh, so I did that. I've already sewn one side. And I also, um, I'm going to show you how, how I did it. But of course, having a punch specifically for the slots is a one punch deal. To try to get a real nice slot on top and bottom is a little bit of work, but I'm gonna show you how I do it. And it uh, comes out most of the time. Every once in a while we'll get a little fail, but uh, other than that, I will show you that. You can see here on the inside of the holes, um, the slots where that drill press punching technique took place, and it really does make it nice. So. I will show you that here in a minute. I'm gonna go ahead and finish sewing this and uh, then we're getting close. We're gonna, we're gonna soak it <laughs> a little bit and we're gonna press it or hand mold it. We'll do both. So the holster is completely hand sewn. Everything's set. We've uh, clipped and burned our um, end threads and now it's just a matter of cleaning up the areas that were glued together that are now double ply. I like to use flap sanders. Uh, they work good for me. This is a 240 grit. I'm just gonna touch it up a little bit. The nice thing about the small uh, drum, it gets into these, um, these little areas that are inside curves on the holster. So nice and smooth. Okay, so next we're going to um, edge the entire holster where, where it's now doubled. 
and uh, then I'm going to show you how to cut out the slot, um, the cut and I'm, I'm sorry, the punch and cut method versus having the uh, slot punch. So we went ahead and edged the uh, perimeter and um, that is all set to be burnished. I want to go ahead and cut out the other slot here. I initially cut out the first um, hole punch earlier because I like to work on half of the leather thickness. So if I were just to punch that straight through at this point, I'm not sure the results. So this way I can control that a little bit more. I'm gonna place this into my drill press with the punch. And then I'm just gonna punch both of those holes out very quick again so I don't burn them. So anyway, those are punched, they're not burned, they are burnished in there. And now let's go over to the other table and I'll show you what I use to cut these out to give you know the closest and nicest appearances um, you can achieve. At least that's the plan. Of course, all of this could be eliminated just by having the uh, appropriate custom made slot punch, but that's too easy. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so we're gonna take some kind of a, a cutting pad here. I use a piece of cardstock here to protect the back of the leather. Now, I have these putty knives that I have um, sharpened. These are high carbon steel. They're probably from um, the 70s, and they are just an excellent tool to use for this. So this is about, I don't know, it's about an, maybe just a hair over an inch, but if you can see that if I use this tool on that line, it goes from the hole to the hole. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna back this up just a little bit so I don't, um, sort of like over focus or something like that. And then I'm just going to place that on that ink line as best as I can so that it's straight up and down. Better contact here, the better. Uh, that didn't make sense, but anyway. Okay, so now we're just gonna do the other side and then cross our fingers that all of this is is working good. All right, so now you can see that the front is fairly nice and the back's a little chewed up, but we're gonna try to fix that the best way we can. And in this case, I think it's just gonna need um, a little bit of an edging. So I'm gonna open that up just a little bit with a tapered wooden paintbrush. Open that slot up just a little bit. And I have a slot, I think it's called a slot edger. And these are um, absolutely wonderful for this process. So we're just gonna slot edge. You can get these at Douglas Tools, and I think uh, Barry King might have some. Um, at, you know, if anybody can help me out in the comments exactly where they're at. And uh, I only have this one size, and I don't even know what size that is because it's not marked. Okay, but anyway, you can see the front slot looks pretty nice for a punch and cut. And the back... I'm just going to I'm just going to use a, a larger edger right there and we're going to take that ugly little spot out and then that one and then we're going to come back to our slot edger Okay, 
And then we are going to burnish the inside of the slots. Oh my God. I am just like falling apart here. All right, so all in all, not bad. We are ready for molding. We have the sheaths all set. They're in the flat condition. Um, all the cut and punch slots were done. As you can realize, it would be so much nicer to have a slot punch. Um, but anyway, if you need to clean up the inside a little bit, use this uh, tapered paintbrush um, and then get you a Dremel drum quarter inch and then stick it in there and then clean it up. As you've seen, it takes a lot of work and it would be just so much smarter to get the tool. Anyway, that's on you. Let's go ahead and um, get a tub of warm water ready. I'm gonna go ahead and soak these and then we're gonna go ahead and, and mold them and uh, press them, at least show you the concept. All right, pulled a bonehead move, deleted some footage on my initial molding and uh, I will replicate that here on this new clip, apologize. So I take a tub of water or you can go to your sink. Lukewarm to warm water, not hot. Um, I take one spritz of saddle, liquid saddle soap and um, mix it in there. I don't know the science behind that, but uh, learned this from some old harness makers. Apparently it penetrates the leather better. So anyway, I apologize, but I already had molded this in my press, but I'm gonna show you the steps that it takes from the flat stage in the previous uh, video clip. So first thing you do is you set it in there and we'll bring this back to flat. And you let it sit in there and you let it soak for um, 15, 20 seconds maybe. You don't wanna leave it in there uh, a lot longer than that. But uh, anyway, just sort of let the water get in every fiber and uh, you'll start feeling the leather. It uh, literally starts acting like a modeling clay. So we're gonna do that. And then we're going to set it down and let that water flash, let it soak in and uh, sort of come back to just the natural leather. And again, we're replicating what I did on the flat. Get that, uh, we'll let that come back to color for about two minutes. Now the leather is uh, very, very soft and malleable and um, kind of like a modeling clay. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna open it up a little bit. And take your blue gun, and now here's where the fun begins. This is going to be extremely tight, and uh, at a few times during the process, you might think, oh my goodness. But anyway, just keep pushing, pulling, grunting, and, uh, and then forcing it in there. So we'll force the gun in there, and like I said, this is a replication video of the one I accidentally dumped. So you're going to push, pull, grunt, and then... It's really going to be hard. You're going to get that muzzle to the muzzle end. You're going to make sure that you maintain that grip clearance that you need. And once it's in there and set how you want it, we are going to take the blue gun and you may need to tap that in to really seat that trigger housing here into the leather around the stitch trace here. You see that fills it up really nice. We still have all our requirements. The um, sweat shield is in proper place and we are ready to insert the uh, sight track. Now I have a dowel rod here. It's 3 eighths of an inch. And uh, on my blue guns, I don't necessarily recommend this, but that's what I do is I shave off the uh, front sight to employ the, um, the uh, sight track. So I take my tapered paintbrush handle and I just start giving myself a little bit of room in there. And then I take the 3 8 inch dowel and I will force that. Now, there's you'll see through the leather 
that that sight track gets in there and just tap it up to the bottom of the ejection port. Okay, that's all you really need to do. Now you have your gun and it's ready to mold. Now there's two ways that you can do this. And uh, the first way is I make a bunch of homemade molding tools. Uh, these are finials from lamps and then I just mount them into a wooden handle, all different sizes. This happens to be a uh, faucet handle that I mounted onto a piece. It's nice and smooth, works great for molding. And what you do is you take these tools and it's very important to develop a mold on your firearm because that's how retention is, is gained. So there's two points of um, retention on a holster like this the ejection port and the trigger housing trigger area. And that's what's gonna lock that uh, firearm in there. Eventually the, um, uh, the molding is very important for that step. So now we're just gonna take molding tools of your choice. And then we're just as, we're just gonna start forcing that leather around the firearm you can do the same thing here on the sight track. And uh, you can mold however you want. The injection uh, port is right here. You can press that down a little bit with your fingers. You can use these tools. Um, just take your time, mold it, get these retention um, points established. Again, the port and the trigger, and then, then let it dry. The next thing I'm gonna show you is if you're gonna make a bunch of these, and a big time saver is a 12-ton press with some uh, gum rubber, and I'll show you that here in just a second. So mold away however you wanna do that. Um, here on the back of the trigger, I take a large finial and I just mold a little dimple in there and then let that dry. Everything is ready, all the molding is done and we are just gonna let that dry with the blue gun and the sight track dowel rod in place. I'm gonna show you an alternative method of uh, pressing your um, molded and sight tracked um, holsters, still in raw stage, of course, on a 12-ton Harbor Freight press. So what I use is, on the very bottom, I have a 12 by 12 uh, piece of steel. I have a one inch thick gum rubber pad. I'll set that on there like that. I take some plastic sheeting. This happens to be four mil um, HDX plastic sheeting from Home Depot and I'll set it on top of the gum rubber. And you can also use the same materials that the Kydex sheath makers press with. That's something you can research and, and uh, establish for yourself. This is rather expensive. The, the press itself, I think with coupons is around 150. The gum rubber is ridiculously expensive. So once I do that, then I, I just put a little lubricant on there. The plastic basically keeps the um, gum rubber from burning the leather. We're going to take our molded holster and basically center it on the body itself with the blue gun. Don't use the real gun. Um, I don't recommend it at all. So now once we have that there, we are going to take, excuse me, excuse me for reaching, our second sheet of plastic. We're gonna set it on top of that firearm. Or I'm sorry, that holster with the blue gun. And then we're gonna take our second piece of one inch thick gum rubber. And we're gonna place it on top of that very carefully so we don't move the holster. Take a second sheet, 12 by 12 steel. Set it on there. And then I use a, a filler and I 
put it on there. Now it's just a matter of cranking. And we're compressing. You're gonna have to get a feel for when enough compression is obtained. If you look on the side, I don't know if you can see it, but that gum rubber is sandwiching that holster and blue gun in it. Now, we're just gonna let that sit there for five, 10 minutes. If you wanna go to lunch and come back, that's fine too. Let's do that and we'll be back. So the uh, holster and blue gun have been in there approximately 10, 10 minutes or so. And now we're gonna go ahead and pull it out. And basically what this does is it does a lot of the preparatory molding for you. Once we pull it out of here and you dry it, technically you can leave it at that stage. So let's open it up and take a quick peek. peek. And uh, I'm gonna remove all of these items. And you're going to have a compressed firearm in the leather. It uh, basically produces all of this nice molding. And you see the sight track in there. You see the trigger housing. Now you can let this um, uh, come back to color a little bit. You can put it on your board. And um, if you saw the shearling liner on my table, that's primarily to keep it from getting uh, marred up while it's in uh, a very heavily cased mode. So now, technically, it's, it's done if you want it to be. Let it dry, and uh, with the gun and the uh, side track stick in there, and it'll be ready for the next step. We went ahead and took it out of the press. We set it down here. Now all we're gonna do is basically form the wings back a little bit. That will ultimately be determined uh, by the end user. Um, you can come back here, and as the leather starts to dry, various uh, degrees of moisture will accept molding better. You can use uh, these little craft tool, I'm sorry, yeah, craft tool pro edgers for any, um, any, any work. You can do as much or as little as you want. Like I said, once the two main retention points are done, the rest of it is uh, all up to you. Modeling tools, uh, bone folders, uh, Sharpie pens, get the smaller pens that have a nice round end. All of this stuff can be used for molding, all right? Now we're just gonna set that dry because I'm in Arizona. I don't wanna stick it out in 112 degrees. I'm gonna let it sit and just dry for 24 hours, and then we're ready for the dye tank, and I'll show you that. Here is a high-tech shade tree drying rack that I employ here at Victor George occasionally uh, while nobody's looking. It's a dowel rod that is mounted in a industrial floor model fan. It's wedged in the handle and on low cool air, uh, this will dry the holster. Get creative. All right, we are ready to dip dye this. So the holster is all set to go. We've got everything right. The grip clearance is correct. Magazine catch release is out, um, out of the way. We have our patch on. Gives us rigidity. Now we're ready to dip dye. Now the dip dye phase is also very important in hardening this leather um, because a good professional daily carry holster should be firm. All right, so we are going to get ready to dip dye this. If you have, depending on your shop size, whether you use gallons, quarts, or these small four ounce or whatever they are, Here's something that I do occasionally, and for dip dyeing, uh, I will mix. So here's three different sim similar shades of brown, and uh, they're all half full. I'm gonna go ahead and use them to get rid of them. And uh, then I have a plastic uh, rubber made kind of a dish from the dollar store, and my holster ready to go. So I'm gonna get some gloves on. I'm going to get a little bit of ventilation through the side door, and then we'll get started. Let's go ahead and mix our colors. This is probably a little bit too big of a dish to use for this, 
but it's all I have at the moment. Try to find something that fits the product that you're dip dyeing uh, as well as it can. And be very careful. And that you can always add a little bit of um, rubbing alcohol to lighten the colors up a little bit. There is no formula for any of this. Okay, we're gonna. Okay, this is a one take shot here. So what you want to do is you want to take your holster and you're going to lay it in there and basically get it soaked. Now this dish is a little deeper and the, and the leather holster is a little bit high. So just dip it, keep moving it. We need to obviously get this backside here. Press it in a little bit. Again, this container could have probably been a better choice. All right, so be very careful and just just move move the leather throughout the dye, get it everywhere. You want a nice even coat. Dip dye is messy, but boy, I tell you, you get a good color that way. All right, so now, whoa, <laughs> so now crisis averted. So now we're just gonna let that flash. We're gonna let the leather uh, absorb that dye. As you can see, that's what it's doing. I hope I'm in camera. Looks like we got everything inside and outside covered pretty nicely. You know, look for light spots, but uh, all in all, and I'm actually very pleased with the color as well. Now, because that patch is glued and sewn on to the front face of the holster, that could lighten up and dry a little bit different color, but uh, all in all, I think we're good. Holster is completely dry from the uh, dyeing phase, and now we're going to do the final acrylic phase. So this, um, this stage here is the final finish. Uh, acrylic is a, a product I don't know the science behind it, but it doesn't uh, just dry, it cures. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and dip dye it. I'm gonna show you what I usually do. I think this is Angelus. Of course, you can use acrylic resiline. Um, and then if you don't wanna dip dye anything, of course you can use your daubers. Um, you know, do whatever you're comfortable with doing. I'm just showing you a way that uh, that is a little different sometimes, okay? So we're gonna do the same bath technique. I'm gonna show you uh, something that I do sometimes on my acrylic products. But anyway, here we go. We're just gonna soak it in there. Again, keep the holster moving. And uh, you know, you can use a foam brush. There's all kinds of different ways to do this. Now we're just gonna let that drip. Just use an old cotton t-shirt. I should have cut it up into pieces first. And then wipe off a lot of the excess drip. Sometimes don't have drying patience, but I have to force myself to do that. Anyway, I am going to just make sure there's no streaks. And again, this is Angelus finish versus Phoebe's um, acrylic resiline. So I'm just gonna set this off to uh, sort of air cure for about 15 minutes. And then I'm just gonna come back and I'm gonna do a little bit of burnishing around the edges and uh, then then we'll be ready for the final conclusion of the fitting process. So the holster has been sitting for approximately um, 30 minutes. 
uh, while the acrylic is still somewhat malleable, take a burnishing tool, um, run it around the edges. That uh, acrylic finish will be rubbed into the edges and it'll give it a nice ultimate shine. I won't waste your time by doing that. Just do the entire holster. I take my tapered paint stick handle. I will burnish that acrylic into the slots and that is it. Now, let that hang in your shop for 24 hours to really let that acrylic finish uh, um, finally cure. Once that's cured, let's pretend we've gone 24 hours. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the bag that the click and ship came with and we're gonna place it into that bag and we're gonna force it into the holster. Now that is because the blue guns are a hair smaller than the real gun and um, we need to stretch it out a little bit. So uh, once that is done, then you can take, do a couple of things. Take your time with each of these steps too. I'm just showing you here in a mad rush. Take a piece of wax paper, place it into the holster and draw in and out for about a half a dozen times. What that'll do is the wax paper will sort of transfer to the edge, give it a little bit of a, uh, a slickness to it, ease of draw. So the owner of the holster uh, will then have to do a break-in period themselves and um, basically put it on their belt, draw it a dozen, 24 times. Eventually it's just gonna seat itself into a perfect fit. That is it, we are done. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly discuss the pattern pack itself. Again, comes with five patterns. In this case, the Glock. Comes with a Herman Oak eight ounce click and ship that we built this from on the video. Now, the only thing that I could see from this pattern pack is if you were to have a, um, an optic on this particular gun, this is also built for a potential optic, I would take the initial pattern and right here, instead of having this uh, gradual flow here, I would bring that line in a little bit tighter. And then that would allow for a better fit for an optic, but otherwise it's very smooth. The sweat guard um, fits perfectly and I am super happy with this. In conclusion, we are finished. I know this was a long video. I tried to fill it with lots of uh, individual fabrication steps, so lots of tricks and different techniques to help you as a young holster maker build this yourself. Now let's take a quick look at the value of this particular pattern pack and um, the George Canfield and crew at EDC Leather have taken a lot of time to make this a great value. With their pattern pack, again, check what availability of guns and cats that they have available, but uh, you get five hard copies of a pattern and you get the Herman Oak eight ounce leather click and ship. So $35 is what that'll get you. So basically you can build this holster for $35. And uh, if you were to buy the things individually, in each individual pattern is about $5. You can cut these to your own leather if you've got some skills and the leather available. If you don't, buy the pattern pack. Individually, the click and ships are $21 to $26. Again, depending on if there's any exotics involved or if there's um, any other details, they're, they're, um, they're constantly upgrading and updating their sales. So get you know, one of these enjoy the build we all know what the value of these are when they're completed this is the real mccoy and i hope you enjoyed the video thank you i'm going to build another one here soon and uh, have a great day